I have Rick Renner with me, and we're gonna get into some pretty powerful material today that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. I believe we have a prophetic now word for you about the seasons and days we're living in. Please repost this, if you'd be so kind. Somebody's gonna be blessed, they're gonna be impacted, and I wanna thank the partners and friends who help us make this possible. Rick, welcome. It's good to be with you, Thank Joseph. you for being with me. I'm having a good time. Right before we jump into the topic, I want to tell people that you have some tremendous books, just right on the front end of this. You know, your books have so impacted me. And uh, we're talking about so many things, but light and darkness. You have like 50 books, so many uh, books that you put out. But this book here had made such a dramatic impact on my life that I want to thank you for it. Well, you're welcome. And you know, that book is not just text. No. It's no. filled with original photographs no. and illustrations. Let me open it, just very quickly. I think that book is beautiful. Yeah, it, I don't even know how to get into everything that's in it, but I just, it, it talks about... It's page after page after page after page of history, and it's like an encyclopedia of what the believers were going through in the first century. I'm not trying to push my book. No, no, I, I, think, know, I know you're I really not. like that book. I really like this book because it really impacted me. It made me fall in love with the seven churches. Good. It made me fall in love with the, the early church. You deal with everything... New Testament in this book. And, Try to. and then there's a sequel to it called No Room for Compromise. Right. I just wanted to talk about that Thank you. because of where we're headed. And speaking of that in the seven churches, we're in the days that speaks of the last things. I believe we're living in that. And those books not only refer to it, talk about it, but I believe we're in a time and season that you are prophetically opening up for the body of Christ, at least doing your part. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to get into that today. Okay. So what, what should we talk about? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm not the only one. Yes. I'm just one. Yes. There are many people speaking wonderful messages about the end of the age. Amen. And I'm grateful that the Lord has tapped me and asked me to address this subject. That's wonderful, Rick. But in Matthew 24, verse 37, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, and I shared this in the last program, the Greek means exactly as it was in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be which means whatever was happening in the world before the flood is going to be replicated in some way at least at the very end of the age. So I decided to do a deep dive to see what was happening in the world in the days preceding the flood. And it's quite shocking to see what was happening. Wow. It's not what most, you know, people think the earth was wicked and dark and right. violent. Why was it wicked, dark and violent? Good question. There, there's a reason. So let's look at it. Please. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And then we're going to backtrack even further than that. Okay, sir. But in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, the King James Version says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. By the way, the multiplication didn't begin in chapter 6. It okay. began much earlier. Because the gene pool of, the, uh, of Adam was still closer to its original state. They were yes. able to reproduce very, very quickly. Okay. And because their lives were so long, they were able to beget multitudes of children. So many. So by the time that you come to Genesis chapter 6, most scholars agree there were at least several million people on the earth. Okay. And Noah, uh, Adam lived so long that it's very likely that he saw at least a million of his own descendants. Oh my goodness, Isn't that's, that that's a sobering thought. But look what happens in verse two. Okay. It says, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Well, that phrase, sons of God, is used in the Old Testament to describe angels. Okay. We find it used that way three times in the book of Job, which is the oldest book in the New Testament. Yep. And in the Greek Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament, yes. this particular verse is not translated sons of God, it says the angels. Okay. So this is talking about angels. Yes, I believe that. And Peter addresses this and Jude addresses this. Yep. And they both say that there was a category of angels who left their posts. Yes. And they did something dastardly and evil. And we know what they did. God loved man so much that even though he had messed things up when he left the garden, God said, angels like watchers in the earth mm. to help man in his fallen state. That's right. And when the angels begin to watch over man, they saw women for the first time. Oh, wow. And they became obsessed with women. And they begin to choose from the women. This verse says, 
wives, it's a bad translation. Okay. Be better mates. Mates. Women with whom they could mate in order to produce their own offspring. Okay. Now, some people say, oh, this is just fantastic, you're making this up. Well, the, the number of early church fathers who wrote about this is stunning. My goodness. And they all speak about it with a single voice. Wow. Authoritative, early, early church fathers, they yes. all agree about this. Jewish sources agree about this. It's recorded in the Book of Enoch, and please listen to me, don't get weird about the Book of Enoch. That's good, Rick. The Book of Enoch is not a book of the Bible, but it was considered to be early commentary, and the first 36 chapters of the Book of Enoch predate the Bible. Amazing. Which means Noah carried them onto the ark. And, and Jesus would have known the Book of Enoch. Jesus knew the Book of Enoch. Jude, who wrote the Book of Jude, is Jesus' half-brother. Jude quotes the book of Enoch and even quotes one of Enoch's prophecies. Really? Peter refers to the book of Enoch. So while it is not a book of the Bible, it's commentary. Now people use all kinds of commentaries. People use Matthew Henry's commentary. Right. And they use all kinds of commentaries. So don't say, oh, we're not going to refer to the book of Enoch. <laughs> then don't ever study any commentary ever again. That is so good, a commentary. It was a commentary. I really like that perception. That's really An good. An early, early commentary. And the first 36 chapters are believed to have been written by Enoch, and almost all scholars agree with that. Now, the, the later chapters were probably added later. Okay. But those first 36 chapters, which describe these nefarious events, is generally believed to have been written by Enoch. Now, let's talk about Enoch. Well, when you talk about Noah and his family, you've got to go all the way back to Jared. Okay. And Jared was the great-great-grandfather of Noah. Yes. And all of these names of these predecessors have prophetic meaning. The name Jared means shall come down. Okay, shall come down. And his name prophetically depicted what took place during his time. And it seems like it was during his time that the mutinous angels began to come down. My goodness. And that's what Jared's name means. Shall come down. Jared had a son whose name was Enoch. <laughs> and Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah. And Enoch's name means to teach or to correct. Wow. And during Enoch's time, he walked with God. We know from all kinds of sources that Enoch tried to bring a correction and he tried to teach. He even addressed the fallen angels, told them to cut it out. Yes. But they had sworn by mutual oath that they were going to rebel. They would not listen. My goodness. But even Enoch's name was prophetic. Yes. Enoch was taken, but before he was taken, he had a son whose name was Methuselah. <laughs> Methuselah's name is prophetic. Wow. It means when he dies, it shall come. <laughs> and it was a prophetic statement that if this thing did not self-correct, by the end of Methuselah's life, his death would trigger the flood. Now, the people who knew Methuselah knew that about his name. Of course. So they must this, have said... This family remained pure. They must have said, don't let anything happen to that kid. So here you have all these <laughs> celestial beings rebelling against God, coming down, mating with women. Uh, and we know from verse 4 of yes. Genesis chapter 6, the women were then giving birth to monstrous creatures called Nephilim. And my, my friends, this is not fantasy. This really took place. Yes. But this family had heard from God. So Jared was prophetically named. Yes. His son Enoch was prophetically named. Wow. And with each generation, revelation was subsequently being added from generation to generation. How powerful. So then Methuselah had a son whose name was Lamech. Okay. And the word Lamech means lamentation. Mm. And it denotes that during the time of Lamech, this thing was at its peak. Wow. Evil, evil, evil was at its peak. And that's why there was great weeping and wailing and lamentation during Lamech's time. And Lamech had a son whose name was Noah. And the name Noah means rest or comfort. In fact, it says that in Genesis chapter 5. Fascinating. And he prophesied that during his son's life, rest or pause would come to all this evil that was proliferating in the earth. Yes. Another very early document is called the Book of the Giants. Yes. It also predates the flood. Amazing. And in the Book of the Giants, which again, it's not Bible. You can't take it as Bible and you can't build all your faith on it. But you can read it like a commentary. But it states that the giants... Uh, ate all the labors of men, mm -hmm. so they ate everything that men could produce, but the world was not designed to feed giants. <laughs> so when they were finished eating everything, 
they then begin to turn on people. Wow. And not only that, the giants then begin to cannibalize each other. Really? They begin to eat flesh, drink blood. Oh. And that is why, after the flood, the very first law that God gave to Adam was, you shall not eat or drink blood. Let's not go back to what we just destroyed. Now, why would that be the first law you would give to Noah? But that was the first law because before the flood, the world was filled with cannibalism, the eating of flesh, and the drinking of blood. So God said, no, let's not ever go back there again. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. You know, you read that, you don't realize that. You think it's for some other reason God had, but no. That's it's why. It's because of the mutinous angels and giants and cannibalism. So let's go to Genesis 6. Please, come Is on. this okay? Oh, Rick, I'm enjoying this. I hope you guys are enjoying this. By the way, these celestial beings coming down into the earth, it's the answer to all ancient mythology. Some people say, ah, oh, the Greeks, they just had overactive imagination, Zeus and all these pantheon of the gods. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. The Greeks were brilliant. Yes. They wrote poetry. They formed geography, algebra. They came up with logic, science, architecture. We still can't do some of the things they did. Amazing. The Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, these were not people given to fantasy, but they lived much closer to these events. Wow. And there was an echo of these events. And when Noah built the ark, he knew the flood was coming to eradicate all this evil. Wow. That was the purpose of the flood. It wasn't to destroy, it was to cleanse. To cleanse. And in fact, when the Bible says it was being sent to destroy, that word destroy also means to prune. To prune. God was pruning this thing. Wow. He was going to eliminate the evil. Mm -hmm. And when Noah and his family exited the ark, they had just been on the ark a year. A year earlier, they had seen the giants. <laughs> they had seen these monstrous creatures. Man, oh man. They had seen this activity of celestial beings doing dastardly deeds in the earth. They saw it all. Yeah. And when they left the ark, they knew all of that. And as they moved and traveled across what today is Turkey and settled in their regions, they carried those stories with them and passed them on to their kids. And eventually, when it seemed like all of mankind began to assemble in around the Tower of Babel and God dispersed yes. the nations, those nations had the early bare bones of those stories and carried them with them. And that is why today there are 270 flood stories from all over the world. 270? 270. That's a lot. I didn't realize that many. That's they amazing. All, it all came from the people who were dispersed at the Tower of Babel who were descendants of Noah and his boys. Okay. And I'll just throw in one other thing, real interesting. <laughs> one of Noah's boys was named Jephthah. Okay. And Jephthah settled in what is today called modern Turkey. Mm. And he had a son whose name was Magog. <laughs> Come on, Rick. Come on. And Magog became a kingdom in the center of Turkey. And in the kingdom of Magog eventually became the Lydian kingdom. And the capital of the Lydian kingdom was Sardis. I'm going to take you there. Oh, I can't wait. And there was a little interruption in the Lydian kingdom in the city of Sardis because there was a general who began to seize power. He killed the king, and he began raiding Meshach and Tubal. Interesting. And that king's name was Gog. <laughs> Gog is not a fictitious character. He really lived. Yep. And I was recently at the tomb of Gog. Well, that tips some, some conversation over a little bit. It because, does. Because you're correcting something by having been there. Well, I'm not trying to correct. I'm just providing information. You're just providing information. Yeah, I, I'm not even giving you an opinion. Just I'm just giving you history. It's just a coffee talk. That Magog and Gog lived in central Turkey. I mean, that's just a geological historical fact. And Turkey. Turkey. Turkey is what they're talking So you can about. do with that whatever you want to do with it. Take it how you will. But the flood was sent to prune the situation. Yeah. But the giants appeared before the flood and after that. And after. Let's look at it. Yes, help us. Rick. So Genesis chapter 6, let's look at verse 3. And okay. the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days will be 120 years. Well, some people say that's God's promise that we can live 120 years. Well, why are you limiting yourself? That's so good. That's not the outer limit. Yeah. We just think wrong about longevity. Wow. When God said his days will be 120 years, at that particular moment, which apparently God said that during the end of Methuselah's life. Yeah. God gave the warning, okay, Methuselah's going to die soon. I'm going to give you, yeah, you've got 120 years to self-correct. Wow. 
Talk about patience. Talk about patience. God is never in a rush to judge. If you think God just loves judging people, he does not. So long-suffering. He was not quick to judge Adam and Eve. He was not quick to judge Cain. In fact, he put a mark on Cain so nobody would touch Cain. He gave Cain time to repent. He gave mankind 120 years to repent. How about Ahab and Jezebel? <laughs> people think they were just quickly judged. No, no, no. Elijah had been talking to them for years and years and years and years and years, calling them to repentance. God gave them space to repent. You come to the New Testament, you look at the example of Ananias and Sapphira. It looks like they were quickly judged. But you know what? They agreed together. Yes. They came up with a plan. They hatched an idea mm -hmm. to sell a piece of land. It takes time to sell land. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it takes time to provide the documentation to make a transfer of the land. And God was patient through all of it. It takes time to collect the money. Wow. By the time they came in and lied to the apostles, they had had lots of time to work on what they were doing and to correct. Mm. God is long-suffering and is not willing that any should perish. What a word. It doesn't mean they won't perish, but it means God is not going to be guilty of judging too fast. He always gives people time to repent. Wow. And if judgment comes, it may look swift, but if judgment falls, it means God has given that person or that nation a lot of time and they didn't take it. Mm. Isn't that amazing? It's powerful. It's prophetic. It is. And there's so much I want to get into in a prophetic flow here, but I want you to go where you want to go. All right, go. let's keep going. Yeah. So now let's go to Genesis 6, verse 4. Yes. And there were giants in the earth in those days. Uh -huh. These giants were the result of this angelic mingling with women. Now, Joseph, there are people who immediately say, no, it's impossible because Jesus said angels are not given in marriage. And he did say that. Right. He said they're not given an aims to marriage in heaven. Wow. But something happened here that was sinister. Yeah. It was dastardly. Other people say, no, this is impossible because the Bible says everything produces after its own kind. Sure. That was the design. Right. But we know today, due to genetic engineering, oh. you can produce all kinds of things that are not after their own kind. That's right. And these angels violated what was natural. Yes. And something unnatural was produced as a result. Y you might say they're supposed to produce after their own kind. Correct. But they violated that. They violated and the law, just like they're violating it now. And spiritual beings can produce with natural beings. They can. We better thank God they can. And Joseph, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the end of the age. Well, what's happening today? We're producing things that should not be produced. That's right. They're mingling the... DNA of humans with animals it's trying true. to produce all kinds of new creatures and some of it's really working. Chimeras. That's not natural. Yeah, it's not natural. It's not natural. Yeah. And what happened before the flood is being replicated in some way in our own day. Some of this is transhumanism. Yeah. It's not natural to be connected to a computer and be half human and you know the transhumanists are saying and this is in my new book oh, that man. today it's not only possible to be transgender you can be transhuman. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. It's science fiction It doesn't stuff. stop. It's like transgendering was a gateway yeah. to get people to completely mutate. And you know what? It's a perversion. We're living in a day of monsters. Monsters, Rick. It's a perversion because spirit can create with flesh. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have showed up. Thank God it can. But all of this is a perversion of that. And you call it monsters. They're monsters. There were monsters before the flood, and Jesus said there are going to be monsters at the end of the age. That's right. And he really said that he did. in Luke 21, 11. He said there will be fearful sights, the Greek word phobotron, which is the word for monsters or freaks. Fascinating. Monsters or freaks. So a literal translation would be at the end of the age, there will be the appearance of monsters or freaks. Yep. And we really are surrounded by it. We really are. I don't want to offend anybody, and I'm not going to. <laughs> but just look around you. Yeah. There are some people that are pretty monstrous and freakish. Freakish looking stuff. I mean, a hundred years ago, what we're seeing today didn't exist. Didn't exist. And Jesus said that there will be great signs from the heavens. The word from, this is Luke 21, 11, the Greek word apo, describes something descending from the heavens. Mm. Now, translators never knew what to do with those verses because they're so unusual. Yes. But we know today that even the U.S. military, congressional hearings, they're talking about things that are showing up in the heavens that nobody knows what to do with. And I'm not going to take a position on what they are, but let me just tell you, don't be too shocked if these things really begin to show up. Yeah. 
because Jesus said it would happen and it would be a replication mm. of what was taking place in the earth before the days of Noah. A replication. And just like all of that was a lead up to the flood, these events happening at the end of the age are going to be a lead up to the great tribulation when wrath is poured out. God will never destroy the earth again with a flood. Yep. The judgment will come. God said it would come. And eventually the earth will be refined by fire. Oh. You know, I really believe personally, and I got into this in a previous program too, but that you are a sign and a wonder because of this. Now I know many people are studying this. Many people are bringing it out. A lot of wonderful people. Wonderful people. But you really have a now word about this. Not only have you been to the site of Noah's Ark, the actual Noah's Ark, not the, I one, have. I have. Not, not the tourist attraction we're talking about, actually over in Turkey in the ground. And we showed that. And I'm taking you there. Oh, I, Rick, I am so excited. I am so grateful and I'm excited. Thank you. I, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, you were teaching on this recently. And I want to get into this because I believe it's a prophetic sign, uh, at least to the people who hear you in this circle. You were preaching recently, you were teaching on this topic about the days of Noah, the last things, the season we're in, and as you were teaching it, the power went out. Yeah, it did. It went out. You handled it so Everything well. Everything turned dark. It, it turned dark. You and Pastor George handled it so well. It was oh, awesome. Actually, we, I told George, hey, I, I live in the Soviet Union where we've lost electricity. <laughs> so if it doesn't happen to somebody, it's best to happen to me. <laughs> but you handled it so well, that's, and that's the side point. But I was watching it, and I was watching you live while you were teaching this. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And he said that this is a sign and a wonder. That when this happened, you're teaching on the very topic about the end of the age. These things are happening. And then darkness came. And then you kind of navigated and instructed through it. A couple of events changed. And suddenly you were back. And there was light on. And the Lord said there's going to be light and darkness. You're going to come through it. And I believe it's a sign of the times. Sorrow may last for the night in some of these things but joy will come in the morning. And I believe it was a confirmation that we truly are in the days of Noah. Now, I know that's unique, but that's how I see things. And I just want to thank you for standing and teaching on these important things at this time. Well, you're very welcome. Do you believe it's prophetic, Rick, the I days do. of Noah? I, I don't believe it's any chance mm -hmm. that suddenly all this, if you look on the internet, it's flooded with talk about Nephilim oh. and fallen angels Everyone's and Noah's, everybody's it. talking about it. I, I don't believe it's a coincidence. No, it's the spirit of the age. It's, you know, even in the world, there's a prophetic sense sometimes. And I want to say some of what people are saying is just crazy. It's just pure crazy. It's just nutty stuff. <laughs> people are talking like Nephilim are all over the place. Oh, I know. They yeah. are not. They, <laughs> they are, are not. not. A lot of it's imaginary. It's true. Some of it really is some weird stuff taking place. Yep. I don't know about all of it. Yep. But be careful what you watch. We have to be careful. So like on this program, a lot, of a lot of times I'll talk about wild conspiracy stuff, but we always bring it back to the Bible. Because ultimately, if we don't talk about it, other people are going to. And, I so and, and then they'll give them the wrong conclusions. And so I'm so grateful for your ministry. I'm so grateful for your leadership. You have led tremendously through this time. And you know, I, I won't go into, or nor can I go into, all the amazing feats and things you've done as a ministry and what God's called you and Denise to do. But you've really led and showed so many how to do it. And I just want to thank you again for that, Rick. Well, thank you. That's very kind. And thank you for the, the information you're giving us today on the you're days welcome. of Noah. You're welcome. Now, we're going to go there. Yes, we are. We're going to go and look at Noah's Ark in the ground and really thank God for what he's doing at this time. Thank you. You're welcome. Rick, is there anything you want to say to the viewers today? Anything you'd I like to I want to share? say thank you for supporting Joseph. Oh. And Heather, Z Ministries. They're a great blessing. Keep supporting them. You know, I, I watch Joseph every day. I watch all their, all their different kinds of programming, who they have on. It takes a lot of money to do this. This facility is beautiful. You help them do that. You help them film all these programs. You're sitting there eating at the table, but somebody's got to prepare and put it on the, on the, on the table. Mm. And that's what they're doing. And so I want to say thank you for supporting their ministry and be faithful, keep doing it. They need a lot of money to do what they're doing. And I believe their voice needs to be heard and their voice needs to be on a lot of different venues. So please help them. Thank you, sir. That's very gracious of you. Let me look right at you. At renner.org, uh, you're going to get all kinds of books, materials. Now, you also have an online church. People may or may not know this. But it's in Russian. I know, but you speak in English. 
So I enjoy that. Well, it's not always. Sometimes my son Paul. Oh, Pastor Paul is awesome. Thanks. I got to tell Thank you, me. I enjoy him so much. I told him, I said, if it was in English, Pastor Paul, I'd listen to you every single Sunday. You but know, we have 226,000 people with us. That's what I wanted to say. Part, part of our online oh. church. That's a lot of people. Online? Yeah. I mean, Rick, that's profound. We have a physical church in mm -hmm. Moscow, which is just magnificent. Yes. And then we have 226,000 people that are with us all over the world. My goodness. It might be the biggest online church in the world. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know another one that competes with it. Maybe it's out there, but I just haven't heard of one yet. And I just got to say, that is truly the work of an apostolic ministry and the way it's reaching the world. And we've been to Good News Church in Moscow, and it's tremendous. And I believe, again, it's a sign and a wonder to the days of knowing what God's calling us to do. So let me just say this. Let me look right at you. Please, if you would, go to renner.org. Rick has a book called Last Day's Survival Guide. You have another new book coming out. I don't know. Well, when is it coming out? The book? It's going to come out at the end of the summer. It's called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, oh, man. and the World Before the Flood. Now, you know why I'm really excited about this book that's coming out? And I want everyone to be looking for it. The reason is, is because so many people write on these things and they say it, but the way you've broken it down and the way you're going to, I'm really excited about it. Well, right. it has about a thousand footnotes <laughs> because the, I don't, I want people to know this has really been researched. Yeah. And so that's it. Anyway. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Let me pray for you. I just want to speak peace and life over you in the name of Jesus. I pray that the information you heard today would just magnify in your heart, that you would get a revelation out of it, that the Lord would begin to amplify through your life. Remember this, on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. Uh, a man or woman with a revelation in this type of, of world, you're not at the mercy of a culture gone mad. The Lord Jesus wants you to win more than you do. This is your time. This is your hour. A huge thank you to Rick Renner and his team and everybody who's doing so much for the, the body of Christ right now. Thank you for being here. If you would, please consider partnering, consider standing with us, and please, if you would, watch this. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family, and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly, and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it, and I hope you become a part of our partner family today culture and you've got to understand something both God and the kingdom of darkness are territorial and you are the hinge pin you are absolutely the emissary the free moral agent of permission to give access to light or darkness I'm Joseph Z and I recently had the Spirit of the Lord speak to me to write this book servants of fire it is a last days prayer intercession and prophecy manual for how to rise up activate the forces of heaven to work on your behalf we go into so many things in this book that i know god spoke to me about from his word that's going to greatly impact you and take you forward the world is crazy things are getting wild but you can overcome with the spiritual forces of heaven right from the manual that's written in this book we go into everything from dealing with strange encounters wicked spirits how to push back authorities that are of dominion of evil and take territory in Jesus. I got to tell you, this book is a must have for your library, a must have. It will navigate you right through these difficult days and you will see victory. You will see results. Did you know most Christians, most believers have everything they need. All they need is a revelation of what they have. And this book will provide that for you. You need it. I'm telling you, it's a now word, a revelation. I'm Joseph Z. I hope you pick up servants of fire for your future and your benefit today.